So whilst we're on the topic of uh, back on Fedora, um, yeah. let's talk a bit about the actual creation of the spin itself because we haven't really talked about that yes. much. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess why did you want to make a spin? Rather, like you could you could have just like you know released the packages, and that be the end of it. Why did you want to go all the way and actually make a spin? Uh, so personally, uh, I think when I, uh, I think when I want to make changes in like projects and stuff, I want them to end up being something that, uh, everyone can really benefit from. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, uh, making a spin allows all this work to reach more people. And, uh, since a lot of other people also want to have a cosmic desktop on Fedora, it just kind of makes sense. Made sense to put in the extra work to uh, make it a spin, but uh, that involved, of course. I think uh, where we were last at, I had created the packages. Um, mm -hmm. From there, they had to go through package reviews, and as I mentioned, they're pretty rigorous. So that took uh, probably like a month or two um, once we started doing that, and then uh, after we got everything in there, uh, of course it came around time to make the change proposal in December. Mm -hmm. um, there was kind of a period of time where we were just releasing alpha alpha versions in the official Fedora repos. Like mm -hmm. people could make their own like custom spin, I guess, if they wanted to just install the, the packages themselves. But uh, I think that it makes sense once they're officially in the Fedora repos to just make a spin at mm -hmm. that point. I mean, there's there's spins for basically every desktop on Fedora. So might as well. So if somebody wanted to make a spin, let's say some new desktop came out or there's some desktop right now that doesn't actually have a, uh, a spin. What was the actual process that you needed to go through there? What did you actually need to do in Fedora to make this happen? Okay, so the first step, you have to have packages for, <laughs> your, for your spin. Uh, everything that is needed to run your specific spin needs to be in an RPM package. I would start by uh, using Copper. Um, <laughs> that's their custom build system slash uh, external package repository. And it's free to make an account. It's free to uh, start uh, setting things up. If you don't know anything about RPM packaging, it's also a great like testing ground. I Oftentimes, people will say to run things locally, and you can. But I found it easier to just run, run in the copper. And then if something fails, uh, the build logs are great. Just find out what went wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, so learn how to make RPM packages. Uh, there's some great documentation in the Fedora docs about that. Um, once you have those packages, uh, uh, you'll need to submit them for review. Uh, you have to create a uh, Fedora account system account. Uh, you have to accept their uh, their like uh, FPCA, I think it is, Fedora Project Contributor Agreement. Mm -mm. Uh, from there, you go to their Bugzilla, and there's like a template for requesting a package. It gives you like uh, slots for the package name, package description, your account system username, and then you have to put in the URL of the spec file and uh, the RPM. Mm -hmm. At that point, uh, someone will get back to you with like uh, action items, and there will probably be a lot to start because there's a lot of review items. Uh, and if you want to make their lives easier, you should probably look at the uh, the package guidelines before submitting it as well, mm -hmm. because they'll end up just being like, "Did you even read this?" Uh, but <laughs> but yeah, there's there's a whole ton of stuff to be thinking about, stuff that I would never have thought about and probably can't procure off the top of my head just because it's been so long. Sure. I did this back in June, but uh, each package will be reviewed individually. Um, and depending on how many packages you have for your desktop environment for your spin, um, it could take a long time. For instance, Cosmic at the start had like 21 packages. It has like 25 now, but mm -hmm. it was easier after the fact to add packages. Like we packaged Cosmic Player recently, Cosmic Wallpapers, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, so once things are reviewed, uh, you have your packages done, uh, it comes time to where you need to actually request the spin. Change proposals are uh, are on a deadline, so you want to make sure you get that in before uh, the version you want your spin to be in. Uh, the Fedora 42 one, for example, was in like December. I think it was December 18th. Mm -hmm. um, so you submit the, the proposal. 
Um, I think at that point, you may want to reach out to somebody in Fedora and let them know your intent just so that they can help you out. For me, Neil Gompo is a huge help. Uh, he kind of uh, was my consultant through the whole thing. Like he, he, uh, he was like, all right, here are the next steps. Here's what you need to do. Uh, and that made it really easy for me to keep track of what's going on because there's a lot of things uh, at that point that you need to be aware of. There's like a live sys scripts, which I don't actually know what those do, but I made a PR for that because so uh, the scripts uh, are like per desktop environment or per spin. And then to adapt it to Cosmic, all I had to do was just change a couple of things from like the KDE one, for example. Um, and you'll find that there's a lot of those those kinds of things where you have to make PRs and different repos for like live sys scripts, Kiwi descriptions. Uh, Kiwi, I think, is like an image builder tool that they have. But uh, yeah, then they, uh, they'll use that stuff to actually start building ISOs of the spin. So um, that's actually where I'm at now. We recently got our first uh, official Cosmic ISOs in Rawhide. So if you wanted to download them, you just go to Rawhide. And yeah, so we have the official Fedora Cosmic spin now in Rawhide. Um, we don't have an atomic image yet. That's mm -hmm. another thing that's that needs consideration. Uh, I'm working with uh, with Timothy Ravier. I probably butchered that name. I'm I'm American. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, he uh, he works on all of the atomic images. But he particularly loves Kinoite, uh, so he's big on Kinoite. But he's helping out with the uh, the cosmic atomic image, which is what I'll personally be using, and I'm very excited about. Um, from there, you need to uh, talk with marketing to figure out how you're going to market the spin need to talk to the website people so you have your website for the spin. Uh, you need to make sure that the install installation media works. So Cal they don't they use Calamaras, they use uh, Anaconda. That's right. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure Anaconda works with your spin because uh, basically the live image will spawn uh, your, your desktop environment of choice and it'll show Anaconda in like a maximized window. There's actually an issue in Cosmic Comp right now where, where that window doesn't maximize for some reason, but that's like a minor detail. <laughs> Apparently, the maximize request is not being honored. But yeah, uh, I at like pretty soon I'm gonna have to uh, get like an ISO to actually start dogfooding that for myself, uh, making sure that everything is stable and people can install from that media. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Neil just out of curiosity did an initial install and he said things were working pretty good. Um, but yeah, uh, from that's from there. Oh, my phone's at low battery now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh well, I'll get that in just a second. Um, so from there, um, I think honestly, just making sure you're responding to bug reports and stuff, uh, and then once the official spin comes out, uh, making sure everything's stable and continuing to maintain it, obviously. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of like from zero to hero for a spin. Mm -hmm. So what about the um, the SIG then? Like, wh where does that sit in this? Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that part. Yeah, uh, you'll want to uh, near the start of your intent to make packages. Mm -hmm. You'll probably want to make a special interest group. Uh, sorry, I'm grabbing my charger. Um, yeah. Uh, so Fedora SIGs are uh, pretty easy to create. Uh, you just explain that. Uh, there's a new desktop environment or you you want to package this desktop environment and you want to create a group of people similarly interested in that goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, uh, most of the time, it'll just be approved. I don't actually know if there are many SIGs that aren't. Probably the ones where it doesn't seem like people would maintain it. Right. Uh, but, um... Sorry, trying to find the plug here. <laughs> so yeah, good, so... so good. So making a making a sig is definitely important. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh I would put that be either if you want help building the packages, you probably want to put that step before you make the packages themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that's what I ended up doing, but I still ended up doing the packages all by myself. <laughs> and now at this point, I have so much like uh, automated infrastructure surrounding it that uh, if people want to help, I'm going to have to start documenting things. And that's that's another goal. You got to document your processes. Mm -hmm. 
especially when you get close to spin release, uh, you also want to document like uh, it, you want uh, desktop environment specific documentation. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I believe there's KDE docs, there's GNOME docs, and probably for other spins as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just common common use cases, what you'd want to do and how to solve problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, There's actually some... Go oh, sorry, go on. No, I was there was going, somebody who volunteered to do some else. documentation. Yeah. No, go on. I was going to say, um, what sort of support have you received, like, for doing this? Like, how many people... Like, how much... Um, what? How many people are involved in the SIG and just general interest in the project? Yeah, so uh, the biggest involvement has been me and Neil. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why it was just us two on the change proposal. But mm -hmm. um, there have been uh, a couple of people who have done significant work on like some of the build scripts. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that uh, Weez Noakes, I don't know if you've seen him around the Cosmic repos as well. Maybe um, seen he, the name once or twice. I doesn't really he's an those. occasional contributor to Cosmic, mm -hmm. and I believe... I mean, he's a Fedora user, so I guess he wanted to contribute some to the uh, automated build scripts. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I gave him SIG access, so he's a member of the SIG. Uh, the uh, the guy who, who heads the Rust SIG, uh, mm -hmm. his name is Fabio Valentini. He's been mm -hmm. a huge help, especially with Rust-related questions. Um, he developed a tool called Rust to RPM that helps you uh, at least get started with the packages. Mm -hmm. But you know, I had to do some modifications because that that tool assumes that you're not vendoring your dependencies, and mm -hmm. you know, I had that exception and all that, um, where I was able to vendor. But yeah, uh, so he's been a, he's been a huge help. And then uh, there was that guy who wants to do documentation. I actually don't know the status on that, but other than that, it's just been people generally interested in Cosmic and bringing up issues when they exist and all that. So yeah. Sweet. That's uh that's the thing. <laughs> so it sounds like most things are coming, of it are coming along pretty well then. Yeah, things are coming along well. Uh I'm I think that really the biggest question is when will cosmic release uh mm. like stable. <laughs> um I think that's important for, for us at Fedora to know, uh, because we like to align our release schedules with <clears throat> releases of spins. And I would hope that their release schedule closely aligns with ours. Obviously, it's not a release blocker. This isn't a very important spin yet. Uh, so, but I I hope that they release maybe maybe close to April. Uh, beta, I I look you you'll have beta by yeah. then, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I really don't know. Like if if they're planning on making an alpha six, which uh, word on the street is that they are. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. They're not going to hit their March deadline. I'm sure no. of that. Um, no. <laughs> but uh, I can I can say that because I don't work at System76. <laughs> they're going to try to keep their they're they're trying to be optimistic about their release schedule. Well, I asked Jeremy I about it on Mastodon. He's like, we're gonna do it. We're pretty much gonna do an Alpha Six, and uh, yeah. that's that. He wasn't gonna <laughs> confirm anything else after that. 